Okay, it's Frank here with 4D Honey Beyond Hive number two here. And I've I found the problem that I was I had the inner lid upside down on these hives for the first two years. And a bunch of YouTubers let me know that it was upside down and finally explained to me why it was upside down. So I turned it right side up. But then I have the problem with the inner lid, which is under this lid right here. This is the telescoping lid or the outer lid. The inner lid is glued onto the outer lid. And I couldn't figure out why they had done it. And I think I know the answer now. I think what's happened is I don't think they've actually glued it on. I think what's happened is because there was propolis on the underside of the lid, when I flipped it over and the weather got warm, it actually glued itself to the upper lid. That's my working theory because I never scraped off all the propolis, which is a good thing to do for reasons like that. It makes things hard to work with. So I'm gonna open this lid now and I'm going to, uh, hopefully there aren't too many bees in between the upper lid and the telescoping lid. I'm going to pry the inner lid off clean up all the propolis and hopefully that will take care of that problem. Now with this hive I may do a deeper inspection as well because because um, it hasn't been producing well. They, they haven't been up in the uh, up in the honey supers at all and I had some moisture last time so I want to figure out what's going on there too. So let's see what we got here. Huh, and this time the lid is staying down. Look at that. All right so that's a good sign that the lid stayed down like that. Let's see what's going on here. Not too much in the way of spiders on this one, that's nice. Now, I guess all this moisture here came off the lid just now, so I'm going to make sure that this water, there's a bunch of water down here, you might not be able to see it, doesn't fall into the hive, because again, when I searched the hive last time, I found a big puddle of water on top of the frames, and I think I dropped that in off the lid. So again, beekeeper error could lead to problems with your bees, so watch what you're doing. So here's the prop list that I was talking about. Now today's a cold day and that's probably why it didn't stick today because this stuff here is not activated, it's actually hard as a rock. But when it warms up, it heats up and it sticks. So I'm going to remove as much of it as I can comfortably without bugging the bees too much because I'm going to be in this hive quite a bit today. And that might help it not stick. So the fact that it didn't stick today leads, gives credence to my theory that they didn't actually glue it. It's just because of the leftover propolis that was on from before. And that's what actually glued it. And there is plenty on here, as you can see. This is just one side here. So there's a few bees up here, certainly not as many as in my previous hive, but better than there were last time. So more than there were last time, I should say. So we're gonna ha have, a, have a look into this hive and see, what, um, see if there's anything obvious as to why they're not producing as much as the other hives. A few bees up here, that's fine. Now there's absolutely nothing happening up in these honey supers. There's like, well, there's a bit of comb drawn out, a real little bit of comb drawn out, but hardly any bees at all. So I'm gonna pry this box open, get into the lower boxes and see what's going on. Now these bees of my three hives, which are all very, very easy going, this hive has been the most pleasant. Absolutely no, uh, no aggression at all from these bees. So it makes me look forward to splitting them next year because at least from a behavior side, from, a, from an aggression side, it's a great strain, right? So I'm gonna remove this burr comb. I've been kind of lapsed on removing burr comb from the underside of frames. But that's got to change now too. I think I got to take it all off. Now this hive, this super has 10, 10 frames on it. I've experimented with my first hive here with eight frames and that's going really well. They're drying them out nice and wide, which is what I was hoping for. Now, seeing as I'm going to go deep into this hive, and it's not a great day, it's kind of overcast, and there was some rain about a half an hour ago, it's sort of great conditions for bees to be nasty. So I am going to smoke these guys 
in anticipation and keep the smoker nice and close. See a lot of honey on these frames here. Oh yeah. It's like a ton of honey on this outside frame. Now I got these arrow pullers, or arrow pullers, I'm thinking my bow hunting. I've got these uh, frame pullers that I might use, but for now I'm gonna try and stick with fingers just for practice because I haven't been, uh, oh my gosh. It's only been a few weeks that I've been beekeeping without gloves. And here's a frame really nicely full of honey. Okay, that's a good first frame. I'm trying not to squish these guys as I go. Second frame here, mostly full of honey as well. And I just want to have a thorough inspection. It's been a while since I've done a big inspection on this hive. And I just want to see if there's anything strange happening. And plenty of honey on this frame as well. I mean, they definitely have those these two brood boxes full which is great news but I just it would be nice if they started making honey they really should be making honey there seem to be plenty of bees here this was a brood frame as you can tell by the pattern on this side this side looks more like a honey frame but this side looks like a brood frame because the pattern of brood in the middle and honey all around the sides and the top and a very nice looking frame and there's a decent amount of bees in here. I mean, I've seen more and I've seen fewer. And it just may be that there's not enough bees to make that much honey right now. Another frame full of honey and nectar. like another really beautiful brood frame right here. Let's have a look at this one. And this one has the honey all around the top and sides, the top third or the top couple of inches. Look at that. And then brood in the middle. Okay, and a ton of queen cells on the bottom. Look at that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine queen cells here one on this side. So again, this is where I get really confused, right? What do I do and why are these bees building queen cells, right? It's August. They seem to be doing well enough, but why are they doing this? These are old. Actually, these are really old. And there's nothing in them. These are really old because they're just rock, rock hard. So again, I know they do it just for practice, and they do it just to have them on standby in case they need them. But they always worry me. Alright. Another one over here. And now I have to be aware, like... This is the deepest I've gone into an inspection without gloves. And now it's where I, I have to slow things down and just be patient on where I put my fingers and reach. Because when they're going to sting is when I put my fingers on them, right? That's my theory anyway. Here's another frame that is just chocker block full of, well not quite full, honey and brood. This side is all capped honey and nectar. And this side is honey and nectar as well. You know, and this may explain why they're not in the top box yet. They haven't filled this super yet completely. I look at all, all these four frames and that looks like they're all capped honey, right? So I don't know, the second box is looking to me like it's about 80% full of honey. Look at this beautiful frame. Oh my goodness.
Look at that. Just beautiful. The next one's all honey. And what have we got? Another honey. These are absolutely solidly filled with honey. Look at how thick this propolis is. It's just beautiful. So here's another one just jammed with honey. So does this mean it's honey bound? I mean, do they have enough bees? Um, should, I, should I extract one of these frames or two so that they can make more bees? Or are they just basically preparing for winter already by increasing their honey stores? But this is their honey, right? It's in the... Uh, this is not honey that I would plan to take, but I do want to... Oh my gosh. This box is just locked in there. Wow. Look at that. And I think what I got to do here is get rid of this burr comb. That's why it's so hard to get this out. So I'm going to put this all back together. It's all this second box is, like I'd say, 80% full of honey. Which is fine, but it's not 100% full of honey, and that's probably why they haven't gone up into the super yet. Because they're filling the second box with honey, and once they do that, then they should move their way up. So again, may just be that this hive needs another couple weeks, another three weeks, whatever. It's just running a little behind my other hives, or my other hive. And that's not a bad thing. Necessarily. So I'm going to try and lift this box up and, um, and tip it over and get rid of the burr comb underneath it. I'm going to have a look at the box below because in that box I'd expect to find more brood and less honey, but who knows. So I mean the, the reassuring thing is that, you know, the short answer to why bees are not yet putting honey in the supers is because they're still putting honey in the second brood frame, right? This thing's gonna be 50 plus pounds. It's gonna be really hard to turn over, but let's see if I can do something like this. Yeah, I wanna get rid of this burr comb here. I mean, the burr comb itself is also full of honey. And it just makes it hard to work on the frames. I'll come back and pick up this burr comb. I don't leave it there. I don't want to get uh, critters like raccoons or bears coming in on them. So I'm going to put this box aside for a second. Oh yeah, that's a good 50, 60 pound box. No problem. Ooh. Now I'm going to take a look at the bottom box here just to see if there's anything happening here that, uh, that I need to worry about. Like, I don't know if the queen would still be, uh, still be laying eggs at this time, late in August, or sorry, early in August, it's August 7th. But we'll see. Yeah, it's been a long time since I've been in this bottom box here. So I wouldn't be surprised if these bees start to get nasty. They haven't been thus far though. They've been a really, really easy going hive. Lots of bees on there, look at that. Still a ton of drones, a lot of workers. I would like to get rid of that bird home. I mean, that's where it's handy to have those pullers because it was a lot easier to pull them out because it was tight with a lot of bees in there. Let's get some of these bees down a little ways. Oh, 
smoking my hands a little bit. Just to try to keep the bees off them a bit. But again, here's where I just really need to be careful of where I put my fingers. Because you can see when the bees start coming up and start bouncing off your veil, that's when they're starting to find a place to want to sting you because they're not happy. So here I'm seeing lots of uh, lots of empty brood frames. This frame's got a lot of nectar in it, but not much else. Wow, it's a beautiful frame. A lot of nectar in this former brood frame. Looking for the queen. Not seeing her. On this side. Yeah, I'm gonna cut this inspection now. And the reason why is because I've, I think I've answered my question. Um, the reason why they're not making honey in the supers yet is because they're still making honey in that second brood box. So the hive seems healthy. It seems well organized. So I should really just uh, be happy with that and let it be. Pardon the bee pun. Let's try and go slow with this one because there's a lot of bees on there. I'll squish any. Worked out pretty well. So I guess my uh, my first feeling about this uh, this puller is that it's worked well I mean you don't need to spend the money on it I did but for me it's it's just an added sort of security layer slash vote of confidence confidence builder because I'm just starting to uh, to not use gloves so I'm just gonna push these bees down so that I can put put on the second brood box and not squish a whole bunch of them I normally don't smoke these bees at all, and this is too much smoke. But again, I just want to get them off that that edge there, so that I can put the second green box on and not squish a whole bunch of them. And as it is, they came right back. Go away, go away, bees! I don't want to squish you. Okay, that worked out not too bad. So that's it. That concludes this inspection. Um, if they make honey in the in the uh, in the um, in the honey super, great. If not, it doesn't matter. It's still a healthy hive, and being that it's the first year, it may be very likely that they don't produce enough honey for us to take. So I'm going to have to live with that and be happy. That's it. Thanks for joining me. It's Frank at 4D Honeybee.